Hello everyone, this is Mr. Brain Junkie here, and today we'll be talking about a science fiction film called Shin Ultraman. Be ready for some spoilers ahead. Sometimes in the future, giant monsters called kaijus begin appearing inside Japan, which forces the people to fight them with military force. Luckily, the humans are able to defeat them one by one, but the monster seems to be getting stronger every time they appear. This time, the kaiju is attacking the power grids on the countryside, which forces all the civilians to evacuate, while the military has stationed their outposts inside the nearby forest. The kaiju research team begins monitoring the creature right away, while the monster continues destroying the entire town, but the people quickly notice that the enemy has somehow turned invisible. They speculate that the creature's skin is able to manipulate visible light, making laser weapons completely useless as a result. Very soon, the monster has arrived towards a second power grid, and this time the people see that the kaiju is actually consuming the electrical powers. This appears to have made the creature even more powerful, as it begins destroying everything and causing tremendous damage towards the cities, while leaving nothing but debris behind. The armies try to stop the creature immediately by shooting numerous missiles towards the enemy. However, the kaiju is able to sense the incoming threat as it fires a powerful beam while destroying all the missiles at the same time. This manages to make the kaiju even more angry as it destroys everything nearby while leaving nothing standing in its way. Just when the people are running out of ideas, a Kaiju specialist called Shinji notices that a boy is still inside the area, which causes him to go save the child immediately. Very soon, the people receive even more terrible news as a flying object is approaching Earth in blinding speed, and eventually crashing onto the ground while knocking the Kaiju flying across the field. This causes a gigantic shockwave that appears to have knocked out Shinji as he tries to protect the young boy. The military personnel are shocked to see what's in front of their eyes as a gigantic humanoid called Ultraman rises up inside the dust clouds. The kaiju sees this and quickly begins attacking by shooting its beam towards the massive titan, but the energy doesn't seem effective against the giant humanoid. Very soon, Ultraman begins moving towards the massive kaiju and completely absorbing all the energy from the attack. The monster realizes that it's losing the battle and turns invisible immediately as it retreats into the mountain while the silver giant begins racing its hand into the air. The humans quickly begin noticing a huge amount of energy from Ultraman, while the Silver Giant launches out a powerful blast that completely decimates the mountains nearby. The beam eventually strikes the kaiju right on the head, which causes a massive explosion while shaking the entire city as well. It turns out that Ultraman has destroyed the whole mountain with a single attack alongside the giant monster, and saving all the humans from being killed. What's even more, the Silver Giant appears to have noticed the damage that he did before flying off into the sky and completely disappearing from the human's radars. Surprisingly, Shinji appears to have survived as well and continues carrying the boy into safety. However, after coming back from the kaiju's attack, the man's teammates, especially Asami, notice that the man is behaving very differently, including all his habits that all seems to have changed. Before the group can finish their conversation, a second kaiju has started attacking attacking a nearby city, while causing all the humans to run for their lives. The military quickly stations the team onto a nearby base once again, as they try to figure out why the creature has appeared. It turns out that the monster is heading straight towards the nuclear station, as it tries to consume the nuclear waste, but this will cause terrible damage for the nearby area if the factory is breached. The creature continues digging towards the facility, while the Japanese government is forced to call the Americans and use their specialized bombs to attack the giant kaiju. However, no matter how many times the airplanes drop the explosives, the monster doesn't seem to slow down from the explosions at all. This eventually forces the Americans to retreat as they run out of bombs, while the Japanese government begins running out of ideas as well. Very soon, the creature launches out from inside the ground as it continues maneuvering on the surface and crossing over the mountains. The people realize that they have no other choice but to go intercept the 
monster on foot, but Asami quickly noticed that Shinji has already left the area. The man runs across the forest all by himself while using a mysterious device to transform himself into the silver giant, which now appears to be covered in shades of red. The people are stunned by the massive titan in front of their eyes, while the giant humanoid quickly launches into the air. At the same time, the kaiju has made it towards the nuclear facility while planning to destroy the building by using its massive head. Luckily, Ultraman is able to launch in just in time as he begins spinning in the air and kicks the monster away like a flying ragdoll. However, this only manages to anger the kaiju as it attacks Ultraman furiously while quickly pushing the silver giant onto the walls. The monster continues trying to pierce the massive humanoid as it begins damaging the facility as well, which forces Ultraman to knock the kaiju flying across the field. This gives him the chance to grab onto the monster's tentacles and spinning the creature into the air while eventually tossing the enemy crashing onto the mountains. Unfortunately, the attacks are not enough to stop the kaiju as it finally begins revealing its face and roaring furiously towards Ultraman. Very soon, the monster begins charging up its energy and fires a powerful laser beam directly towards the silver giant. Surprisingly, Ultraman is able to block the attack and eventually begins absorbing all the energy while getting closer towards the giant beast. However, as the fight continues, Ultraman's red pattern begins turning green as he starts losing his powers as well. Luckily, the giant is able to close the distance just in time as he punches the monster using tremendous force while causing the kaiju to crash down onto the ground. This allows Ultraman to grab onto the enormous creature and carries it onto his back before leaping off into the air and taking the kaiju away from the planet. The people sees this and realize that Ultraman has saved the Earth once again, meaning that the giant humanoid must be on the side of humanity. When the group eventually goes back towards their base, they're all surprised to see that Shinji has suddenly appeared from nowhere, just like when he left. The team quickly returns back to their office as they try to figure out the origins of the silver giant, while the news of Ultraman is beginning to appear everywhere on the internet. However, before they can find anything useful, all their computers begin shorting out while erasing all their research at the same time. Just when the people are feeling hopeless, a mysterious entity known as Zerub appears in front of everyone. The stranger explains that he's from a different planet just like Ultraman and he wishes to meet the Prime Minister in person. To everyone's surprise, the alien is also able to restore all the computer files for the humans while trying to persuade the people that he's on their side. Very soon, the Prime Minister of Japan is notified by what happened and decides to have a meeting with the alien creature. It turns out that Zarab is willing to offer the country technologies to fight the kaijus, but only if Japan agrees to be subservient towards the alien. Shinji hears the news and realizes that Zarab is not to be trusted and tells his partner to notify his team immediately. The man quickly leaves the car to inform the others, but Shinji is approached by the alien right away, who blames the man for interfering with his plan. It turns out that the alien's true mission is to cause conflict between the countries by only helping Japan and starting a war to eventually wipe out the human race. He tells Shinji that humans are too dangerous to be allowed to exist before knocking the man unconscious and secretly taking the main character away. Very soon, the people inside the Kaiju Research Department begins to hear some very concerning news as Ultraman is apparently attacking a human city. The military is forced to respond immediately as they fire numerous bombs towards Ultraman, but all the attacks are completely useless against the massive titan. This gives the government no other choice but to sign the one-sided contract with the alien, hoping that this can help them stop Ultraman before sustaining any more damages. It's quickly revealed that Shinji is actually being held hostage inside a secret location, and the man eventually manages to regain consciousness in front of Zerub. It turns out that the alien is pretending to be Ultraman to trick the world into thinking that he is the savior. What's even worse, Zerub has also leaked a footage of Shinji transforming into Ultraman over the internet and turning the man into a wanted criminal. However, what the people don't realize is that Asami has received Ultraman's transformation device known as the Beta Capsule, which was sent to her by the main character. The woman is also approached by Shinji's partner, who tells Asami that he was able to locate the man's location as the main character left traces of ink on the ground for them to follow. This allows the woman to go track down her friend immediately while the city is being attacked 
attacked by the fake Ultraman once again. Very soon, Asami is able to locate the main character as she quickly goes on to free the man from the chair that's holding him captive. The woman eventually hands back the beta capsule as well and begs the man to stop the imposter before any more people gets hurt. However, before their conversation can finish, a massive hand breaks into the building and grabs onto the woman while the fake Ultraman raises her into the air like a small Barbie doll. Luckily, Shinji is able to transform as well and summoning his giant form right in front of everyone as he prepares to fight the imposter. Ultraman sees that his friend has been captured and is able to knock her into the air before kicking the enemy across the field. The main character eventually catches the woman as he lowers her onto the ground before heading off to fight against the enemy. Very soon, the two massive humanoids quickly get into a skirmish but Ultraman is able to take the upper hand. This forces the opponent to fly away but Ultraman quickly launches a powerful blast that knocks the enemy into the air while using tremendous force. The imposter eventually lands onto a large building where he begins reverting back to his true form and revealing that he's actually Zerub. Ultraman quickly arrives in front of the enemy as well but the opponent is able to stun the main character by using his powers. This allows the enemy to escape into the air as Ultraman follows him closely behind and chasing the alien across the sky. Luckily, the Silver Giant is able to catch up to the opponent as they continue to fight furiously in the air but Ultraman eventually manages to blast the enemy by using his laser beam once again. Zerub is forced to fend off the attack immediately but this allows Ultraman to throw an energy disc and cutting the enemy in half while completely destroying the alien at the same time. The people watching this believe as the Silver Giant flies across the sky and saving humanity once again. However, despite what Ultraman did for mankind, the people now know the true identity of the Silver Giant. This causes the entire government to look for Shinji once again while suspending all his teammates at the same time. Things become even worse when the team captain receives a shocking news which makes them go onto the streets immediately as they see another giant that turns out to be Asami. The people quickly realize that something is wrong as the woman appears to be completely hypnotized and is not able to respond to her teammates presence. Suddenly, Asami begins raising her arm and attacks the nearby building with her gigantic body while causing all the people to retreat in fear. Before the woman can do any more damage, a loud voice in the air tells the people that this was only a demonstration and that Ultraman is not the only one who can become a giant. The mysterious voice eventually disappears while the giant woman begins turning around and quickly falling onto the ground as she appears to have lost her consciousness as well. This allows the people to tie down Asami temporarily as they try to prevent her from attacking the city once again but the team is unable to figure out how to return her back to normal. Before the humans can decide on what to do next, a mysterious man called Mephilus appears behind the people and reveals that he's actually an alien as well. It turns out that he was the one who turned Asami into a giant as he shows the people the same technology that Ultraman is using. Mephilus demonstrates the item by quickly reversing the giant woman back to normal once again while Asami wakes up without any memories about what happened. It turns out that the alien wants to offer the country this amazing technology as he promises to help the people weaponize the beta box by using it on the military. This will quickly allow Japan to take over the entire world but in return Mephilus wants to become the country's leader as well. Realizing that the human race will likely be attacked by even more threats from outer space, the Prime Minister has no choice but to agree to this offer. Very soon, Mephilus is able to find the main character as well and reveals that he knows exactly how Shinji became the Silver Giant. It turns out that when Ultraman first arrived onto the Earth, the shockwave accidentally killed Shinji as a result. However, the Silver Giant decided to revive the man's body by fusing together with the human but also breaking a crucial law from the Ultraman's planet at the same time. Mephilus reveals that the giant's fusion with a human shows that humanity can be weaponized by the beta box as he plans on using the people to build himself an army. Shinji hears this and refuses to let the alien succeed even if it means using force but Mephiles reveals that humanity has already agreed to his offer and there's nothing Ultraman can do. Very soon the alien goes to attend a meeting with the country's leaders as they begin the ceremony to recognize Mephiles as the new prime minister. In return the alien takes out the beta box that he promised in front of 
of everyone that's here. Suddenly, a massive hand grabs onto the item and revealing that Ultraman is here as well to stop the enemy's plan. This greatly angers Mephiles and forcing him to transform into his true form while quickly turning into a giant humanoid as he prepares to fight against Ultraman as well. The two quickly jumps away from each other while the main character throws an energy disc at the enemy, but the attack is not effective at all. Mephiles quickly counters as well by shooting his laser beam, but luckily Ultraman is able to deflect the attack just in time. This forces the enemy to jump in and kick the main character right towards the building before grabbing onto Ultraman and throwing him onto the floor while the two quickly gets into a stalemate. The giants realize that close combat is not doing the job and quickly fires their energy towards each other while unleashing all their powers at the same time. However, the enemy eventually manages to gain the upper hand as the energy from Ultraman's human body begins to run out. Luckily, before the main character is killed, Mephiles realizes that they're being watched by someone else. This causes him to stop the fight immediately as he claims to be no longer interested in conquering Earth anymore. Ultraman hears this and decides to return the beta box towards the alien before Mephiles quickly disappears into the air. The kaiju researchers have also arrived into the area to find their friend, but only to see that the silver giant is quickly vanishing without a trace. It turns out that Ultraman has decided to go back to where Shinji was killed and contemplate about his choice to merge with the human. It's also revealed that a second alien from Ultraman's planet called Zofi was the one who stopped the fight, and he came here to bring back the main character for breaking their law. What's even worse, the alien plans to annihilate the Earth by unleashing a powerful weapon called Zeton as he sees humanity's ability to use the beta capsule as a great threat. However, Ultraman thinks that Zofi is making a huge mistake as the humans can be a force for good as well, just like how Shinji sacrificed himself to save the young boy. The main character plans on stopping Zeton all by himself, even if it means sacrificing his own life at the same time. Very soon, a mysterious device begins floating onto the planet's atmosphere, which quickly starts expanding into a gigantic robot that's floating on top of the Earth. All the people around the world are eventually able to see the enormous object, not realizing that everything is about to be destroyed. Shinji quickly goes back to his friends and explains to everyone that Zeton is a powerful weapon that's capable of destroying the entire solar system. However, even with all the nuclear weapons of the human race, the explosion would not be enough to stop the enormous robot. With no other choice, Shinji decides to leave behind a mysterious file before going outside and transforming into the silver giant as he flies directly towards the massive enemy. Ultraman eventually reaches the enormous robot and begins attacking with everything that he's got as he throws multiple energy blades towards the opponent. This causes the enemy to retaliate immediately while shooting devastating bombs towards the main character as Ultraman tries desperately to defend himself. The silver giant uses all his energy to block off the attacks, but the enemy is way too powerful and is eventually able to knock the main character crashing towards the earth. Ultraman quickly enters into the atmosphere as he reverts back to his human form and dropping straight into the ocean. Luckily, Shinji was able to survive the attack, but is put into critical conditions due to his previous fight. The news of Ultraman's failure has also been noticed by the Prime Minister, and the people quickly realize that there's nothing they can do to save the human race. However, as the massive weapon continues charging its energy to destroy the Earth, Shinji's friends begin looking through the files which the main character has left behind. It turns out that Ultraman has given the people the equation for the beta capsule, and the humans quickly realize that this can actually help them destroy their enemy. The team plans on doing this by opening a portal in space and transferring the enemy into a separate dimension away from the Earth. Very soon, Shinji is able to wake up as well, and his team quickly tells the main character about their plan. It turns out that they need Ultraman to open up the portal in space, but this will likely send the main character into the other dimension mention as well. However, Shinji is more than willing to sacrifice himself as he thinks that the human race is worth more than his own life. The man quickly goes outside and says goodbye to his friend, before transforming into his true form and flying towards the atmospheres. As Ultraman gets closer towards the enemy, he quickly opens the portal that's connected towards the other dimension while flying directly into Zeton. The main character is eventually able to break through the barrier while knocking the enemy into the black hole. This forces
forces Ultraman to fly desperately away from the center as he tries to escape the gravitational pull. However, the main character's energy eventually begins running out, which causes him to be sucked inside as he manages to leave the planet intact. The humans look towards the sky and realize that Ultraman has succeeded in saving the Earth, but this also means that their friend is gone forever. What they don't realize is that the main character has actually survived as he was rescued by Zofi just in time. It turns out that the other silver giant has chosen to not destroy the Earth as he was impressed by humanity's overwhelming desire to live. Surprisingly, instead of going home, Ultraman chooses to remain on Earth while giving his body to Shinji by reviving the man and allowing the planet to have a protector in the future. Very soon, the main character is eventually able to regain consciousness once again while being surrounded by all his friends. So what do you guys think about this movie? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.